Hello everyone. I'm glad you guys uh, are back. I'm glad I'm back. Um, I really uh, very happy to be back on the show today and uh, I really want to um, thank you guys for coming and uh, welcome to Mark on the Mark, Intellectual Property, Intellectual Radio from here here ago, Intellectual Property. You think about, about money! Contract, <laughs> contract. <laughs> intellectual <laughs> Property. Welcome to Mark on the Mark <laughs> at intellectualradio.com. Yeah, that's that contract. You know, I want to keep my intellectual property all my own. That's right. So, you know, and I'm his guest co-host today, Robert Bobby Reed. Uh, Robert, thank you very much. I'm coming. his guest co-host. I'm hoping my man show up. Um, I talked to a gentleman who went to the same school I did, uh, Bobby Simmons. And uh, he's supposed to show up today. I, I, I'm sure he will. I hope he does. I uh, hope nothing's happened on the way. But I, 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 he's a good guy. He usually show up. And we were going to go over a few topics. And I think you and I, you know, might start a little bit. Let's go. And um, hope that uh, Bobby comes in and we get to um, actually, uh, you know, let him chime in on it. And what I really want to know from him is that, you know, we all look at NBA teams. And I'm sure you look at NBA teams. You look at NBA teams, right? I love the NBA. Okay, you love the NBA. So, uh, what I want to talk to Bobby and talk to you about is saying that when everybody say, uh, I want to know the best NBA team or your best NBA team, what do you go off of when you say the best NBA team? We know that the Warriors won the championship, so right. we get to crown them as the best NBA team. Right. And then you go with the one that played them, considering uh, you know LeBron and his guys. But... Um, when I look at LeBron and his guys, I don't consider them as the second best team. I consider LeBron a phenom. Right. Because the guys he got on his team, I mean, when I look at it, and I got to explain to you how I look at it, is that you got three guys that are on the Golden State team that if they were on, put it this way, they were free agents and they came to play for the Cavaliers, they would start. Most definitely. You know, you got the kid, what's his name? Um, you got Draymond Green. Draymond, well, he's a starter. Right. What I'm saying, I'm talking about off the Clay, bench. Off the bench. Off the bench. Oh, yeah, yeah. man. Got, Iguodala. Uh, Iguodala would start on yeah. the Cavaliers. Yeah. Uh, what's the other kid? Livingston. JaVale McGee, Livingston. If you had those guys, now look, think about it. So how can you call the Cavaliers the uh, second best team? I, yeah. You're absolutely right. Uh, how can you call the Cavaliers the second best team? Okay, so when you got guys on one team that will start on the other, so they got two teams, man. Yeah. They got two teams in Golden State, man. <laughs> it ain't even fair, man. They got two dang on teams, man. But you know, I base I, I base great teams on the organization and management. It starts at the top, right? And right. I want to give a shout out to your Detroit Pistons for giving Dwayne Casey the job, man. Yeah, congratulations to Wayne. Dwayne got that job. Yeah, man. man. He's, he's proven to be a good coach. You know, good good, good coach. Uh, and uh, he, 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 you know, he's incredible. Yeah, I mean, incredible. he the first coach to win coach of the year and get fired all in the same doggone day. Hold on, what now? Golden, remember the Raptors fired him after he got coach of the year. He was coach oh. of the year, and then they fired him the next day. Was he coach of the year? He was the coach year? of the year this year. Oh, that, is that the first time that ever happened? That's the first time that ever happened, man. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Detroit was like, year. man, oh, come on, geez. man. We need them because oh. Detroit loaded over there. Well, I don't think they love They got them. Blake, and then they got the other big boy over there. Okay, uh, they they went to you, UConn. You named two people. And, and when you uh, just said we go to state, got you know two star <laughs> Now you named two people. I got another another organization, and this is where LeBron James is going to end up at. And remember, you heard it on Marv being Marv show. He going to San Antonio. He going over there with Pop. Watch what I tell you. I don't know. Well, listen, check it out. You know, uh, I want to know where you're at. You listen to intellectualradio.com. You know, and uh, we're going to talk the real things here. So, listen, let me tell you. No way he's going to San Antonio. I'm thinking about it. I got to have youth. I got to have young people. I got to have people who are ready to run up and down. I got to have scores. Kawhi? He only got Kawhi Leonard ain't going to be in San Antonio. What's uh, the, it's, the, it's the age of monster teams. Right. And they right now planning a monster team. You believe me, Kawhi Leonard's. Have definitely discussed things with LeBron James, who have discussed things with Paul you know George. With Paul George, and what do you want to do? Yeah, Paul George, who you else? know uh, Carmelo. Car I don't know why they think Carmelo a bum. If, if you're trying to beat. 
the Golden State Warriors. You better load up. You got to load up. Yeah. And the only way you load up now is guys going to go to a, a loaded up team. You know, loaded There's up only team. a few unrestricted free agents, though, Mark. I don't think people yeah. understand that. No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You know, but uh, you got to have a loaded team. You, you, gotta, you really got to have a loaded But it's watering down the NBA, though. Don't you think so, man? It's only, I mean, if everybody's stacking up on one team, two teams, then what is it, 28 teams in the NBA? 26? I don't know. All well, I know is it's only three, four teams we no, watch every Believe me, they will come with some rule. <laughs> they, they will come with some rule. That, you know, after it gets out of hand, mm -hmm. they're going to come with some rule that you can't do something or you can't have a, a top, a top uh, guy in the next year or something. Right. You know, you have to skip over. It will probably always be like a draft, you know. If you got the top guy this year, uh, free agent this year, you can't get him next year or you have to be out five years or some crap. Do you, don't really? you consider y'all team a super team when you play? You uh, put you and Isaiah on the same team? I don't think at this level. You know what I'm saying? It, it was a mistaken it was mistaken super team. Okay. You know, because Joe, Mar Joe Dumars was never known, basically because I got there. Okay. Because I gave him the ball back and AD wouldn't give him the ball back. Okay. You know, um, and then Dennis Martin wasn't known. He until wasn't. I gave Dennis minutes. Right. So those are two components that weren't there. So I don't know how you would call it a super team. Right, you're right. Yeah, so right. It, it was a little different. Yeah, y'all was just grabbing. No. It was just the bad boys, boy. Yeah. Well, I hope you join us tonight on uh, intellectualradio.com. Uh, uh, if you want to dial in, that's right. Okay, got, hey, 708 223 8953. That's 708 223 8953. I'm really waiting for Marley to come in before I get into the meat nitty gritty of it uh, because I really wanted him to chime in on it. Okay, so we go best players. Let's go best players, you know, and I know everybody out there always go through best players, and I'm going to tell you and why, and you probably won't agree to it, but, you know, I'm going to give you my side of it. Okay, so when you go as players, are you saying best, the best player in the NBA is who? I'm going with Lebanon James, bro. Oh, you going with him? Huh? I'm going with Lebanon, dude. Why are you going with Bron, bro? Because he's bigger than you. He's six <laughs> nine. And he can do everything you can do too. But hey, come on, man. Why not, Kevin? First Durant? of all, he play like magic. He got a body like Carl Malone. You know what I'm saying? But why not? Why not? Why not? Uh, KD. KD is limited. Ooh. And KD is limited, man. Um, Tell me why. Uh, for one, yeah, I mean defensively. I mean, he, he gets at it, and I, I look at him on the help side. He helps, so he's a good help defender, but a straight-up defender, mano a mano, True. I don't True. think that he got that. No, he now, don't LeBron, like when LeBron. LeBron wants to, LeBron he can defend. Defense. Okay, I agree with you. Okay, we're going to say, I would say, honestly, without you know any hesitation, that LeBron is the best player in the NBA. Okay, so when you go to set after that, number two. Number two is KD. KD, okay. And we agree on that. We're going to go through five. Number three is who? Uh, can I go Steph Curry with the shot, boy? Steph Curry with the shot? You know, <laughs> Curry, <laughs> don't go Steph Curry with the shot, <laughs> you know, boy. Steph Curry with, really? Man, hey, you shoot from the volleyball, dude. So you call him Steph Curry number three. Wow. Steph Curry, I'm putting him in my top. You talking about right now, real time today, top prevalent NBA player. You know, I put a question mark beside that one. You okay. Know, but he is in the top five. I didn't see Kawhi now. Leonard this year, so I decided out of mind, Kawhi. I'm sorry, dude. You are you're not there, so he's in the top five. He's would, top five. I would say that, you know. Uh, give me your number four. <sighs> number four. Number four. Number four. Oh, A D. Anthony Davis. Yeah. Anthony Ooh. Davis. What could you have did with him, Ma? AD real. What is six and eleven? I'm just saying, I'm going through this and this because I wanted Bobby to go through it. I hope Bobby. He can come here, be him, man. He be him, he be him. He is, yeah. He's moving up. Have he's, you ever seen anything like that in your nah, game, man? Especially when he wasn't like that at Kentucky. Right. He wasn't even, he, he didn't know he was going to turn into that. No, but, he didn't. Yeah, he's not. How tall foot. is he? Is he seven, seven feet? Foot, seven foot. Unreal. Unreal. That ain't even fair, dude. Well, How do you get a shout out from this he's guy? He's from Chicago. That's right, man. <laughs> he's from Chicago. He's cold. Right. He cold. Hey, listen. Now that's number five. I can't. I can't disagree with anything you said. You know, I think that you know you kind of right on the point with that. You but know? you put a question mark by Steph Curry with the shot, boy. No, I ain't not a question mark. What I'm saying is that uh, I have to give it to him because he's you know three time NBA champion. I can't take it away from him, but. Out of those three, uh, he has you know the most challenge because he can't guard. He, he can't guard. He can't. He, but he, Steph Curry with the shot. 
Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, whatever that is. Okay. 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 Well, Drake. Drake said that. You know. Okay. So I want to kind of shift gears here. Like I said, you can call in at seven zero eight two two three eight nine five three. That's seven zero eight two two three eight nine five three. If you want. Um, but what I really want to get into, man, is that um, something that plagued Chicago, and this is what I really want to get to, is that so plagued Chicago. You're talking about this. Yeah, you know, and the thing that plagued Chicago to me is uh, two things. The first thing is that when we talk about um, the recruiting in Chicago, um, I think you can go down uh, the list from here to there on players that were – all American, all this, all that, all that, all that, and we never, ever, ever get them to stay in Chicago. Mm -hmm. get, get, why do you think they're not staying in Chicago? Uh, you know what, man? It's so attractive to leave home, man. I think that's what it is. Uh, most kids just want to get out of Chicago because it's so bad. Hold, hold, hold on a second. We got a caller. Let me okay, see go. if I'm doing this right. Uh, hello, caller. Are you on? And where are you calling from? Hey, I'm up here in Atlanta, Georgia, Mark. How you doing? Oh, you in the ATL. Okay. I'm from the Chi-Town down, Southside, man. Okay. Oh, really? Where are you on the Southside, man? Yeah, 56 in Michigan, man. You know, I used to come up to the state, and it was time to stay. I was going to school there. Okay, I just wanted to make sure you wasn't just talking like you, you yeah, weren't really yeah. from here just dropping something. You know, everybody wanted me to say. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, You got Craig. Come to me, man. What's happening? What do you want? Well, I, I got a question for you, man. Back when we were in school back in the 70s and 80s, you know, balls are standing in the state. Why are, why are all of them leaving the state now? Well, you know what? Uh, that's a great question. I, I really want to thank you uh, for calling. And uh, I'm, I'm going to put it to you like this, is that when I grew up, there was always a relationship with the high school coaches and the college coaches and the parents and the player. We would all be at the same game at the same time, talking to the same parents, talking to the same people, talking to the same coaches. And you develop the relationship there, you know. And the key ingredient is the fact that most of the schools that we talk about now don't hire anybody from Chicago. And when they do, they don't hire players who are from their school, meaning that Illinois – had opportunity to hire people that played from Chicago that played at Illinois. Um, you know, you might have some, but to the extent of a lot of, of the well-known players, matter of fact, one uh, I'm planning on having him. I hope he shows up. I don't know if he had traffic problems or what, but I really hope he did. Bobby Simmons. Everybody in Chicago knows Bobby Simmons. He knows every coach. Every coach wants to help Bobby. Every player loves Bobby. Mm -hmm. And for him not to be, you know, the head coach is DePaul. Well, I'm not going to say DePaul. Oh, you the head coach of DePaul. <laughs> well, okay. Well, <laughs> <of them. laughs> okay. <laughs> That'll be nasty, yeah. though. Well, you and Bobby? Well, think about the players, though. When nobody leave here. Well, think about the players, though. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take myself out of the equation. Okay. You know, but when I put Bobby in the equation, um, he has a reputation here. He has a standard here. He has a relationship with everybody here. And I, I think that would... Uh, kind of propel kids to be like, you know, Bobby succeeded here. I want to stay here and, 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 and do what he does. You know, you can talk to a kid on their level, you know, and mm -hmm. then you hire people basically who ain't ballers. I mean, I don't know who these people are that ain't ballers, you know. I, I just want to know, hey, look, here you can. Let me stop for a minute. Let but you know, on. you know, you let know. Let me just let you know, we on, let me, we on intellectualradio.com. But Mark, you know, it's I a do good that right network, now because, you know, you're going to get me hot up in here, Big man. Fella. It's a good old boy network. You know it's that. It's a good old boy network. I understand that. But, but in the South, they don't do that. But they bring them boys Hold back. on. Let me bring it to you like this. Let me bring it to you. You, you got it right. Let me bring it to you like this. When you talk about Duke, Everybody Duke bring their boys back. Mm -hmm. They, But they groom them. And that guy ends up at. Where's he at? Uh, Marquette. Right. Yeah. He groomed up under. What was that Capels? What's Coach his name? K. Yeah. And what's his? Uh, he, now he's at Marquette. His number one recruiter, the dude that was the number one. Yeah, he just got a head yeah, coach's yeah. job. Yeah. So what I'm yeah. saying Evan is, Evan Shire from here. Yeah, see, he he on the staff there. See, what I'm saying is, is that they groom their people. Yeah, the man. Dukies, man. But then, but they stay together. But then you talk about a story franchise. Okay, now 
everybody wants to go to that because you know what they're talking all good about their players, their university, their every, everything. Yeah, you the know? family. And the thing that we're talking about here, how come no schools are getting the kids out of You know why they get them? Because they're all family and they all recruit together. If I can't get you to go to Duke, if you can't go to Duke, go to Marquette. If you can't go to Marquette, they're all recruiting together. You know, and right. um, we're not... We're not doing that, you know, for for this kid, you know, Bobby to be out here with all the experience. And then none of them played in the NBA. None of them, man. Hold on, who played in the NBA? Because, like, the kid, the guy that just got the job at Illinois. I don't know. I, I don't keep up with it. Not that kind of. Who, what is it? Tell uh, me. Underwood. Underwood. Where, where did he play? He came from Oklahoma. Did he play in Oklahoma? He was the coach at Oklahoma. And he got the job at Illinois. And they thought... Uh, Mark and Liberty might have got the job. He went. To, so he must have uh, did well at Oklahoma. Did he? He did well? well at Oklahoma. Okay. But, but, well, I ain't gonna criticize him doing well. That's just unfortunate. Well, you know, I mean, they was just, loaded over there in Illinois back in the days. Well, I'm just saying the fact that, you know, we talk about Chicago, and why we can't keep our players. And I, what I'm gonna say now is that down the list, we end our relationships with. The high school players, the high school mom and dad, um, and the players that left their university, and that's a fact. That it always happens. It always they end up you know, going somewhere else. Don't know the relationship. I mean, look, I'm sorry. It's one key ingredient in there that, that changed when you left too. Is that AAU now? You know, the AAU coaches stepped in where the high school coaches was once. Oh, geez. Okay. You know, AAU is the the. The whole thing now, they don't come to your high school. They come to the AAU games. Now they can talk to the coach on well, the side. You're right. But let me because tell it's you. not academic driven. But let me tell you, yeah, true. But let me tell you about the AAU. And, uh, you know, uh, please tune in. You know, please tune in. Uh, intellectualradio.com. Um, one thing, your parents, just one tidbit I can give you right now is that if you're sending your kid to play on an AAU team, that coach should be able to communicate to you what his program consists of and how he's going to improve your kid. Not just physically, but so far as his basketball IQ. And if you come home and your kid can't tell you what kind of offense they're running, he can't tell you how it's being run, he can't tell you what he's supposed to do on defense, he can't tell you why he did this drill because those are things that are important. You're supposed to tell a kid why he's doing the drill. This is the, what this drill does. You're supposed to be able to do these things, and this is what uh, causes you to be a better player. If he's not communicating that to your your son or daughter, then I would be a little skeptical of that person because there's so much fraud going around here. I'm a trainer. I'm a trainer. Yeah, you there's get them out so there. There's so many trainers they, out here. They get them out there and run kids to they. You know, just, and they think that that's basketball. That ain't basketball. No, well, you know, to all the parents, really, I mean, I really want to emphasize the fact that, you know, I'm going to stick with this a, a little while, especially, you know, on, on, on different uh, parts of the show and different times that you are, you really need to know when you can see a bad one. And we can, we can put up a little list of things that when you walk in that ring, rings a flag. First of all, the guy's late, especially more than once. Uh, you know, I don't know about that guy. You know, what are you doing late? And then the other thing is, if he allow other players on the team they to come, come late. late. And then put them right in the game. And then, no, see, you're off my team. I'm right. not teaching you. I'm not teaching you anything, you know. Man, that happens so much, man. But that's, it's so. But KG said it, man. He, you, KG said it. He said he hates AAU because we're raising a generation of kids who's entitled. Well, we feel true. entitled. Yeah. Because yeah. they walk around, you got a kid who got 10 offers from a Division One school. I think 10 offers bring a level of confusion for young men nowadays because we got the Twitter universe. Yeah. And that's the rise they get. Oh, man, I got five, six offers. Well, like my son, I made him cap out early. I made him commit to Chicago State because I wanted them to stay here. Okay. I want them to well, stay so here. So you pick that. You know, what I'm saying is I think that the power has to go back into the parent, and the parent has to be more astute at right. what's going on. You know, I think if you want to protect your child and you want to make sure that, you know, you eliminate the possibility of things going awry, mm -hmm. you have to be astute at what you're looking at and what you're answering and what's going forward. Because, see, 
if you let your kid, most of them kids, when you go into, you know, top kids going to go to Kentucky or whatever. Kentucky. Right? But you want your kid to have a great experience. You want him to go to school, you know, have a great College experience. Fun, and then, you know, then get his, get his degree. You got to do okay, that. Okay, so right. who leads the kid there? And first of all, I'm teaching you bad. If I let you come anytime you want, play anytime you want, mm -hmm. do what you want to do, if a parent, that's bad. You know, uh, anybody that was playing for me, you know, when I was helping AAU, I, I tell them don't come to practice. Look, when you walk in the door, every mom, every dad know it's at 6.30. If you, let you get walk there in, at 6. If you walk in at 6.31, you're late. You know, there's no need to come in here. Right. I'm not going to do it. And then you miss a game. Next game, you don't play. You know, so, oh, no, no, you're not. Because that's how it was when we came up. But Them old school coaches, man. Yeah. You're Man, they wouldn't playing. let you play no matter how good you're you were. Playing. You finna sit down. I'm gonna ask you this though. You remember Tubby Smith? He yeah. said it. He no, no, said no, no, they no. was teaching you how to. He said we teach. We, we raising a generation of quitters. He said it was 900 Division One transfers this year. Yeah. 900. Yeah. He said yeah. when he went to uh, school, he called home and told his dad, "Dad, I don't think I want to go back to school." His dad said, "Well, what's up, son? Are they bullying you down there?" He's like, "No." He said, "Are they paying your tuition?" He said, "Yeah, you eating good, yeah." He said, "Well, you can't come home." Because your bed has been taken. <laughs> Tell me, well, say, your, his daddy told him that was in the 60s. Well, you know what? But see, I think there's another side to this equation which you understand is that if I'm a college coach and I get a better offer, I can leave. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, Ooh. it's not for me to fix, but it's for the NCAA to fix, meaning that um, now that coach is a hired gun but the players aren't hired guns. Right. Okay, so they gave them a little bit of powder when they said you can leave. Mm -hmm. But then still, you got players that are playing, and now they are not getting the $12 million contract that the coaches are getting, but they are letting them leave. So the NCAA, see when you're going yeah, with this well, big the NCAA dog. Got, NCAA got a big issue, man. But the NCAA is a nonprofit organization that's worth a billion dollars. Ah, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? Proper, proper. Oh, hold on one second. You know, hold on. Let, let me do this again. Let me let them know where we are. Intellectualradio.com. Uh, look, I'm, I'm just skipping a little bit. Go let for me it, tell you dog. about you Chicago Ballers, okay? You said you wanted to get I'm into them. I'm sick of the stuff that they tag us with is that when they tell you you're going to be somewhere and come somewhere and do things, we don't show up. Mm -hmm. Okay, listen, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if any of you guys, and you all know me, ask me to go somewhere, I would make sure that it's open. And if it's open and I tell you I'm there, there is no way that I'm not going to be there. I talk to too many of the coaches around here, too many people that brand us with the same brand. And, you know, this is something that we have to tackle right now. What's the brand, Mark? Whatever you want to call it. Don't I'm show there. up. We, we, we're not accountable. We're not accountable. Chicago? You know, hey, listen, man. I'm calling it like it is. I'm calling it like it is. We're prima donna. Look, look, I, you know, whatever you want to call it, you know, um, I'm going to have guys on the show, and we're going to talk about it because this is a bad thing, too. This is a bad thing for you trying to get a job right. as a coach. You know, this thing trickles down. I mean, you might say, oh, this is a little thing I missed over here. But you have no idea who's watching that. Right. So uh, we're going to have to start doing better at, at the fact that uh, uh, lending uh, our expertise to others, you know, mm -hmm. and not, mm -hmm. you know, limiting our presence in the community. We have to stop that, mm -hmm. you know. And then, you know, when we, you're at a function or you're supposed to be at a function, you need to be there, not 20 minutes late, not 30 minutes late. Because, oh, when I came up here the first day. You was here early. Yeah, but hold it, though. What was y'all saying? Tell the truth. I, I, was, uh, I, I didn't want to tell you. Oh, 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 see, I, 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 knew, I had a feeling you were going to be on time. I had to mark yes. with Mark. I, I knew it was going to be on time. I didn't know he was going to be that hey, damn early. Hey, listen, let me let you know. Let me let you know. They were here to discuss the fact that, oh, he's going to be late. 
I was in that chair. Yeah, and he watched came your show. Our show. Yeah, and man. watched your show. But and so. and, and uh, mind I had most of the guys that was in here almost peed on themselves when he walked through. They were like, <laughs> man, that's mug, man. Yeah, I didn't but, tell. I didn't tell him you were coming. I was like, oh, I ain't gonna look like a fool good, if he don't good. show up. Well, no, nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know that's that's so important, man. You know, and I'm speaking to. All you guys, you know who we are. All you guys, you know, you want somebody to give you something, and you want to be able to uh, control your brand, and you want to be able to do things. Those little mistakes you make like that, man, they are very, very important. And get to the school, man. You know, we, we, we walk around parading, you know, want to be, you know, this and that and this and that. But who have you helped lately? But it's Let me ask you what what what, what 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 charity, you know you want you want you want you want stop wanting wanting wanting. Who have you helped? Right. Have you helped anybody lately? Now dig down and tell the truth. Think about what you think about it. Who have you helped? Help somebody. You know what school? What kid? You know what organization? You know who have you helped? You know so it has to be a level of uh, you know you have to be. Some type of philanthropist. You have to have that philanthropy within your body. You know, I think a lot of times these guys, man, once they get it, it's like rappers. You know, rappers be like, oh, man, once I get on, man, I'm going to look out. But then once they get on, they be like, man, I ain't messing with nobody broke. You know, we all from the hood. Majority of the black African-American males that you run into out here didn't come from a silver spoon. Mark, you a west side of Chicago guy. You was probably the first person in your family to make the kind of money you made. So you was able to grab everybody around you. You know, I had an opportunity yeah. to meet some of your family, and everybody, they, they smiling, and everybody yeah, happy, but, man. You know, but, but, but what I'm saying is, is that I want to get I want to get off of the fact that, you know, um, from a, a financial standpoint, what I'm saying is, is that that person over there is a human being that lives, breathes, have issues, have things like you do. Mm -hmm. Put that other stuff over there. Right. You know, just put it over there. Help somebody. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Just help somebody. Even if it's just time. It, it, most of the only it's take time. is time. You know what I'm saying? Just showing up to a kid's uh, little basketball game, a clinic, you know, you know, and some of them do. Let me, let me, let me know. I don't want to get it wrong. I mean, but some of them do. But, you know, I wish more would. Right. You know, especially in Chicago, man. You know, I we mean, have you know, some of the top athletes, man, and you just don't see them. You just don't, man. And it's unfortunate. You know. It's unfortunate, man. And I won't say guy's name, but I've been here my entire life. I'll be 50. And it's just. We just walk around with the super big head, man. Everybody, even the shorties, man, they get the name of these dudes' name on the internet. My son said, he's like, Dad, dude, act arrogant. And I said, son. Oh, man, hold on. I said, dude, we're going to run dead into a brick Let wall, man, when he gets a certain Look, age. Hey, hey, intellectualradio.com. That's where we are. Mark, we're Mark, intellectualradio.com. Listen, I'm going to tell you a story that happened to me, and I felt bad for the kid. I was with some friends. And I knew this kid, I just knew his face, and I, he didn't know me, and I walked up to him, and I was like, I know you. You know, he was like, you know, and the big head was already there. It was like gigantic. Walk in this, the and I walked in this sideways. I said, I know you, and he halfway wanted to, you know, tell me his name and all this kind of thing. And I said, didn't you play it? Such and such. And they said, yeah, yeah, I didn't play it. I said, well, who are you trained with? And he told me, my trainer, I have to fly to New York. And his trainer was the trainer of this person that was the number one draft pick in the NBA. And he went through all this crap. And uh, I said, oh, okay. You know, and some other guy said the same tune. And I let him go through it. He did the same tune. And then maybe a week later, I went to see the kid play. Well, I didn't think he was playing when I went to see the game, right? Boo -boo. I ain't finna say nobody's name. <laughs> no, but, was he boo boo? No, no, he was okay. He was okay. You okay, know, Mark. He was, that's all he Come was. Come on, Mark. Okay, all don't he fly was, in your all all he, Listen, I don't cut it short. All he was was okay. Okay, taking the ball and, out, and, giving me the ball, no, man. No, listen. <laughs> all he was was okay. And I walked out, and, um, you know, if I'm in Chicago, you know, pretty much I'm. Be you known, okay. Right. And I walked out, and you know, everybody shook hands and did like that, and he recognized me. And then he, you know, kind of like, oh, yeah, I did the wrong thing. And I, oh, because he didn't know who you were off jump. 
had no idea. I mean, when I met him the week earlier. Right, he didn't no, know who no, you were. No, I had no idea. And you ain't come up to him like, hey, man, I'm on no, the I was 40 in the ball. No, I, 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 I was putting up 30. They called me to but he I went, Okay. But I went to him, and, and he, he he went through his thing, and, you know, he really didn't want to go there, you know, but I took him there. I said, okay, well, you know what? Let's, let's, uh, let's try this again. I saw you play. And you need some help, son. You know, you're a trainer in New York, stop flying to New stop York. Stop flying to New York. <laughs> and find somebody here that can play because y'all y'all wasted money. He dribbling around cones. No. Nah, like yeah. somebody sticking them. Man, yeah, yeah, I hate when they pull the cones out. That's like Bruce Lee and uh, the game. But everybody pulls the cones out. Uh, pull I don't want no cones. Put, you know put somebody what, real on me. You know what people are spending? I know. I was talking to a trainer yesterday. He paid for, they, them people out there in Burr Ridge pay $50 an hour. I was like, man, I can teach them little white kids this crossover back in the day. I had a nasty crossover. Them little that. white kids, I had them coming. Hey. Oh, that's true. Hey. <laughs> Not just white kids, black you kids know. too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, that that just uh, lends to the fact that AAU, be careful moms, dads, when you're going to AAU, you know, and I think that uh, what I'm going to do on the next show, we're going to make it a point to have about 10 questions that you just have in your mind and that you just ask the uh, AAU group about. And I think it'll help you because, you know, you're going to waste time, waste valuable time with your kid, you know, waste precious time. I got kids like, in AAU, man. I'm going to tell you, them dudes, them coaches, man, I know they're watching, all right, and they know they can't control me. So, dude, I mean, you don't own nobody's kid. Well, uh, you can't tell them that. You know, you I can move my kid whenever he want to. I mean, if he's not having fun, I look at body language. Because body language on bat on the basketball court tells all. You can't teach confidence, right, Mom? No, you can't teach confidence. If your kid is shriveling over like this on that bench, get him out of there. <laughs> <laughs> You're terrible. <laughs> well, you know, I um, I just uh, I'm just trying to see who I got crazy. Hey, Bobby, man, you owe us one, man. No, he you owe us oh, dinner at Ruth Chris, man. No, Ruth Chris, Bobby Simmons. Simeon Bobby. for life. I'll see you at the picnic. Mark, you coming to the picnic. Yeah. Simeon picnic. If he don't show up, we're going to call him, Bobby. Know, man. I, it's got to be something else. I know, Bobby. All right, Bobby. And, you know and, Chicago. And this was a short. This, I called him today. That's all good. So, we know, all good. called him today. but We're going to bust him, though. We're I didn't know. And let me tell everybody here, everybody listening. This was done this morning. Uh... And I kind of have to apologize to you is that uh, I plan on being here uh, every Tuesday, you know, from 7 to 8 now, from now on. But uh, we didn't know where we are going to put, where the slot was going to be. And we decided that this morning, what about, oh, man, like about 11 o'clock? Yeah, about 11 o'clock. So, you know, I... I, I thank Bobby for saying he would come. I don't know what happened, but he's not. Yeah, he's stand up guy. But what I what I do know is that I'm going to try to get my lineup out a little. Or I will get my lineup earlier, and the guys that I uh, get on, they will show up. But I I try to do him like within three hours. All I know is when Matt Mad- yeah. and Isaiah show up, I want to be right here. No, boy. well, if I don't get them to show up, they're definitely going to call. When in they here. call in, We're whatever, gonna, man. I'm gonna get Isaiah comes here, so I will get Isaiah to show up. But uh, you know, I have no idea what Irving. Did. He did be trying to get the Lakers together. Yeah. <laughs> he might not get He go, he go uh, get my man ball. Hey, Isaiah, hey, Magic, man, you uh-huh. dropped the ball. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, bro, he all right, man. He okay. He, he, Here you go with that okay rookie, stuff, boy. Was it a year? This was his NBA rookie year. That was monster. good, though. NBA a different month. What was that? Uh, what was that? Different month. Yeah, it is. Different month. Totally different month. From college? Yeah. Uh, but that young boy over in Boston didn't care. Well, you got some. That young boy, the light skinned kid, I can I answer it. He was he had numbers like Jabbar. You got, his you got some better than others, right? You, know, but you can't you can't tell, can you, Ma? Well, he's just no flop. I mean, he's no flop. You got some better than others. I mean, I I think that he played had a decent year. You know, I think he had a decent year. You know, but um, what I want to do is uh, you know, I don't know uh, um, if any of our existing. NBA players who are here in Chicago. I hope you guys are tuned in tonight or you, you're listening. Uh, I really want to challenge you guys. Uh, we have a voice. We have a voice here. And I want to collectively, through Facebook or through... Um, the Retired Players the Association? Through, yeah, I want to uh, like, uh, tackle some of the topics that uh, 
we all want to tackle. And I know that one of them is um, the fact that we have so many uh, NBA players, not just coaches, but who haven't been given the opportunity to learn the business of basketball, meaning that you talk about the coaches, you talk about the guys that are doing um, radio and television, but you never talk about the people who are doing uh, marketing. Mm -hmm. You never talk about who's on uh, the uh, backside of basketball, the office side of basketball. Right. And we don't get opportunities there. I forget you know? that guy's name that owned all those restaurants. What's his name? Oh, we're talking about Junior Bridge. Junior Bridge. Yeah, yeah, Junior Bridge. Junior Bridge, man, man, took that year. wasn't even in the league that long. Yeah, but Junior, you know, he, took he that had the right opportunity. Man, and just, yeah. Well, see, I want him to get, you know, I want our guys to understand that when you talk about a, a NBA franchise, okay, you have the 12, 14 guys playing, whatever that means. You have some on injured reserve, whatever. Mm -hmm. But in order to run that franchise, I think you have over 230 people Employees. involved right. in that, Sessions uh, and all, all that things. stuff. Right. And um, I wish we had a more uh, in-depth look at the business. The spreadsheet. The business we want basketball. that spreadsheet, <laughs> man. You too, oh, man. I want that spreadsheet. No, we want to do the business of basketball. Because you know? they say the uh, owners... When, uh, when they didn't want to give y'all that collective bargain agreement, it was like, okay, they was going to split the deal 50, uh, 45, 55, 45. Like, the players felt like they should have got more. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to see the owner's income. The owner was like, no, nah, that's time. Well, see, the NBA is man. a privately held company. They don't have to show their book. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're private. It, I mean, I mean, it's not do no you want to show company. your books, though, Mark? Ain't nobody gonna show this. <laughs> Why aren't you? Books, man. Why aren't you? You're not gonna show no books. I mean, you playing basketball for a living? It's a great job. You're making a great living. But we don't have we 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 the business with basketball. We don't get. I got a question for you, man. Right. I, this is a question that I think all these young guys need to know. You want to make it to the NBA? At what point, like the term that you play, you get a pension? How does that work? Like you get a pension after three years. After three years? Yeah, after three years. After three years. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's good, but it's, you know. I mean, but at least you get a pension. Well, see, three but I don't want them looking at that. I want them looking at the fact that you ain't a baller yet. <laughs> you got right. You got to get a game. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody here think they're NBA product. Everybody, and man. Not, and you're not an NBA product. The only thing we putting out here, Mark, I mean, uh, uh, Derek Rose and Isaiah, the last small guards, and, and Will Bynum, those type of guy, Patrick Beverly. But we only put out big guys like you, uh, Jabari Parker, Jaleel Olford, Antoine Walker, Davis. Antoine Davis. We put out big killers. We gangsters. We got the big killers. <laughs> <We put the laughs> right. Big you know what? Let me, I, I, I think the fact that you have big people that come out of Chicago, but, you know, there's a, a just a, a level of play that we're used to. A mm -hmm. certain level of play that we're used to, and like I, like I say, when I was at DePaul, um, coming into DePaul, I don't know how people felt, but as a freshman, to, as a freshman, when they talked to Joe Meyer, he says, uh, "So we're gonna we're independent, we're independent, and we look at the schedule and we're talking one again." He said, "Well, how many games, Mark, do you think are going to win?" I said, "Well, how many are there?" And he, <laughs> said, he, says, Look, and he laughed at me, you know, but that makes me think in the fact that. How do you? Th my process was different. Than I'm his. going to dog you. No, I'm right. winning all the games. Right. I, I can't go in thinking that I'm going to lose a game. How Mark, you, I remember, man, some of them games I used to be at home. Y'all be up. You probably got forty. You get fired. You be trying to tell somebody else to shoot your free throws. You be walking back <laughs> to the top of the key like, I ain't even going to shoot it, man. Somebody else shoot it. I got 40 already. Well, that's how I got in trouble. You know? I know. <laughs> I got in trouble again. Like I said, again, we at intellectualradio.com. You remember that, though? Yes. Uh -huh. You used to be like, man, you go and shoot it, man. I used to be like, Mom, you see what he's doing? Well, that's just that little thing I had in me, man, because uh, like I told a lot of our – listeners and viewers early is that I wanted to own you mentally and physically. So a lot of things mentally I did that would just trip you out. I mean, right. like in the Chicago State game when they said I left after six. You know, you know the game I played with Antoine Walker, mm -hmm. which, you, which you know, I think I was 45 or 47, and I was sitting in the stands, 
47? 45 or 47. And they was, I was sitting there staying, watching the Summer League, and they were giving me a bunch of grief about the fact that they the new age and this is what they doing and right. I came da 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 da. So it's well documented that uh, I look in the stands and I say, hey, anybody got any 15s? <laughs> Fitting! No, my hand to everybody that ever watched the game. Anybody got 15s? I went out and found some 15s and I found some shorts and I got the shirt of another team, the team that they were against. And you can ask anybody, Antoine even said when we were together like a couple weeks ago, I was talking to him a couple weeks ago. And uh, we, we were winning, but I gave him 42 by halftime. And he knows that. And then at halftime, I took his shoes off. Now, this is the in mental part. Right. I was getting ready to tip off the second half. I said, why am I out here with y'all? Y'all can't play. <laughs> I took my shoes off. I took them off right in the middle of the floor. We, we, we're getting ready to start the second half. And I just stopped and say, why should I even play the second half against you? So they, somebody tossed the ball in. I sat down and took my shoes off and then walked to the sideline. Why well, you always had to flip for the dramatics, bro? But always. Now, but, but it'll, it'll stick that way. You know? But you know, it's good that they allowed you to be you, man. But no, you took that. Coach Meyer allowed me to be. He allowed you to be you, man. Coach Meyer. Ray Meyer. Yeah. Coach Meyer allowed me to be me. He allowed you to be you, man. Well, he didn't put you in a box. Well, I thank him for doing that because I never did it to interrupt anybody or insult anybody or anything like that. But, you know, um, it got to be me. You that know, was your personality. It got to be the way I was built. I didn't want to, you know, it's the way I'm built. You know, and half of it was... Who was you watching, though, Mark, to be a great scorer? Because, I mean, you was a great scorer. Dude. Everybody. Okay. Everybody. George McGinnis. Julius Irvin. Right. Uh, it wasn't George no, Gerber. Yeah, had black and white TV when you was watching, so. Yeah. Oh, so you're taking it right there. Yeah. Hey, listen. <laughs> so, listen, on it. Hey, look, I, I'm going to be here every Hello. Tuesday from Go 7 ahead. to 8 on intellectualradio.com. Please come see me. And come enjoy this talk. Okay, every week, Tuesday, 7 to 8. He told okay. me this story about Dr. J. Right. Dr. J had told him how to pick that ball up. Yeah, and yeah. that's when he got that Statue of Liberty. That's where I got that Statue of Liberty. Tell, right. tell us the quick story, Mark. Well, you know, okay, well, what I'm telling you is I'm just a, I'm a, I'm a sponge. I'm a, um, I'm, I, I'm and a that's student. That's what kids need to do I'm now, man. But it, it made so much sense, though. Listen. You said y'all was know, under the bleachers? Go no, ahead. no, it was under the bleachers, but then, you know, me and Isaiah, we had a way of sneaking in, doing what we had to do, and then they, after a while, they say, we can't kick them out. Right. So me and Isaiah just got to be part of the stadium. We just walk <laughs> in when we want to, you know. So, uh, but I went in, and I, I, I saw the doc, and, uh, you know, I got to the doc, and I said, doc, you know, look, you know, my hands are pretty big, too. You know? Doc who? Julius Irving. Okay, the not Doc Rivers now. The one and only. Not Doc Rivers. Irving. Okay. Irving. Okay. And uh, he, um, we put hands up together. He said, "Yeah, you do that, you know, pretty big hands." I said, "Yeah, Doc." I said, "Man, I love when you da 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 da." He said, "Listen, that's for a reason." And I was like, "For a reason, Doc? What, what, what do you mean for a reason?" And it made so much sense. And if you know basketball, and I, I know we got a little bit of video, and you always, when you go to the basket. Your first motion is to clap the ball together. Yep, and then do your and roll. And then get to your roll. Right. But the rhythm of the whole layup is timed by when you clap it together. Because mm -hmm. guys look at you in time when you clap it together to rip it out your hand. Right. But Doc said that watch how they act when you just pick it up without the clap. And I thought about it. And it just shocked people you when I went back to school to where I learned learn how to do it. You know, get <laughs> to the playground, learn how to do it. We and, remember. And, and then I learned how to just off the dribble, just pick it. And when you pick it up, you can see their faces. They like stop. They like, oh, what's right. happening? Well, you know? I had every kid in the hood, me and my boy, used to build the block light. <laughs> well, again, let me uh, be honest with you. Stole it from Doc. Uh, you know, I don't think anything was just created except for Pearl Spin. He created that himself. Oh, Earl the Pearl. Yeah. Uh, right. But um, that was stolen from Doc for that reason because. He told and me what. Yeah, he told me what. Did. Still that from Doc. I, I that. did that. I stole that. And then everybody stole it. Right. I think during my era, like we were the first group to be national TV because believe it or not, WGM was yeah. 
the first national cable television the super station mm -hmm. and people got to see us almost like the ESPN of now but the first one mm -hmm. so we were all over the country early and man I heard the Paul did Paul, yeah. I know, man. Yeah, we had we one TV, over. man. I used to be like, man. <laughs> I had three sisters, one TV. My mama, I'd be like, mama, I can't watch the ball, you can't, you can't man. See the ball. But then my older sister loved you. She'd be like, go on, let her watch it. I'm yeah, like, oh, you yeah, like Bob and Ryan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, All this baby. happening tonight, Intellect yeah. Radio. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Baby. <laughs> those those days, man. What? Those those were those days, man. That that black families like actually sat around the house and, and had dinner together and stuff like that. And DePaul was like was a, a part group. of that. It was a group. Yeah. yeah was what a group. what game was that when you sprained your ankle though? Was that UCLA man in the final four that or was that the Elite Eight that year? I didn't sprain my ankle. Man. I, I remember I remember you springing your ankle in one game, and y'all couldn't finish. You don't remember. I don't know, man. I I, I don't want to, like, bring our record up, like, you know, even though we lost uh, our playoff games, which if there had been a shot clock, we wouldn't have lost at all. Right. But they didn't have a shot clock, so they were able to start. Yeah, and if they had a three-point line, Skip Billy was knocking that mug yeah, down at well, the top of the key. No, but um, uh, uh, I don't know. We were 29-1 and one and 29-1. and one. I only lost maybe five or seven games in college. Damn! My first year. My first year, I lost the most games as a freshman. Well, we went to the Final Four. Right. And then the next year, I was, I think it was 29-1. and one. And the next year, same thing. So Yeah, that's when you used to be walking to the free throw line like, man, I, I, I don't even need to score no more, man. You should. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're making me out to be a bad guy. No, that was good stuff. That was the flip hey, for the dramatics, I man. I want to tell you guys, I'm going to get what you, especially ex-ball players. Listen, man. I want to make this a little platform, man, for you guys so we can talk about issues that we talk about all the time in the playground. Or that the we bar. talk about all the time, you know, well, at the bar. Listen, I want to get this as a platform, and I'm, I'm happy to be able to host it. But everything that you want to talk about that we discuss, this is where we're going to do it. I'm gonna, oh, yeah. It's only the second oh, week because yeah. it's all early. Oh, but yeah. listen, all you guys... We're going to call in, we're going to talk in, we're going to do all of these things. And, uh, you know, we're going to go remote because you finally got a platform to hear you, your actual voice. Right. All right? So let's do this. You know, I mean, here it is. I mean, I I, I, they, I just ran up on it. Come on, man, let's do this. Uh, That's going to be huge, Mark. Yeah, I'll be talking to you guys this week. And uh, like huge. I say, a lot of guys call me. And uh, I'm doing this very fast. I hope you uh, get my. I hope you get Dennis Rodman on here. Dennis is. I gave him. I made Dennis Rodman. Are you kidding me? He was just crying on TV last week, though. He was with uh, Kim Jong Chung and. Uh, I'll say it right now. Kim Jong Chung. Yeah. Uh, mm. Kim Jong Un. Right. <laughs> but hey, hey, he set that up though. I get Dennis Rodman credit, man, for saving America, man. Hey, listen, man. <laughs> you know, um, I want to tell you how. Happy I am to be able to discuss the things with you that lie on my heart, you know. And there's a plethora of things I really want to explain to you. I really want to talk to you about. And then we, I'm going to get to a point where I'm actually solving different issues or, or addressing. I'm not say solving, but addressing different issues that uh, that comes up in your household and with your family and with your sons every day. You know, I want to give. So you're gonna open up a mentorship type thing. I want to give. Mark, my you need to do that. I'm, I just want to get my best shot at. Not making a mistake that I made, or that and my Mar family is willing made. to come around to y'all schools and talk to the kids too. Man. I always talk. He's to opening the kids. up here now. Is Mar motivational speaking I starting to today him. right now? I'll talk to him. All. He got to go talk to the kids, man. Because I, I've been doing that. No, I'm saying you ain't got to. But open the door for the man, man. I've been doing it. Yeah, man. I mean, I, you it's gonna be super school, official. You know man. how many schools I go through? Yeah, man. Do you know how many schools I hit, man? Yeah, I, I'm glad you're doing that. And you I ain't coming in no, with your pants sagging out. I don't need no audience. I don't need, no, audience, I don't need right. no publication. I don't need nothing. I'm coming through the same door they come through, right. and I'm sitting down where you sit down. Let's talk about this, Mark, one time. This, I, I know you remember me was talking one time in the garage. You was like, man, you used to box. Yeah. And you was like, man, anybody want to line up? Talk about that, though. You was a boxing old dude. You was yeah. good with these. No, I was. I learned to be decent with them. You know what I mean? <laughs> but all we had, I lived in K-Town. 
And I'm going to okay. real quick because we got about four or five minutes left for this. Like I say, tune in with us. Damn, that time flew by. Intellectualradio.com. Mark on the mark. Anytime you want. Intellectualradio.com. Um, but I was living in K-Town. And around the corner for us was Archie Moore's gym. Oh, wow. Yeah, back then. Oh, Archie Moore's gym. Dang. Man. And um, it was a part of just the community. Everybody went into Archie Moore's gym. To work out and how to work out and learn how to box. So I followed all, you know, I went with all the other kids, you know, right. to learn how to box. And, you know, it was a, a kind of a guys, you know, look, my age thing. They had a bunch of kids my age, a bunch of kids older. And we all went in there and did it. So uh, I learned how to, you know, handle my own. I learned how to, you know. Finagle. Well, you know, I learned how to, like. I know no, nobody never ran up on you in the NBA, huh? No, when they, you know, people. They found they, out. No, you know, a couple of times they they see what they see. Right. And you like, know when you, you see do, what you man. see. No, I am, no, man. no. Yeah, it's different. Big, big, big hands, man. But it's different. You ain't finna slap nobody. No, it's different than knowing how to handle yourself. <laughs> you know, you gotta know how to handle yourself. Well, well, I feel honored to be up here with the legend, man, because, I mean, he's coming back to Chicago. We had a lot of legends. But uh, Mark, his well, word is fine. Well, like I say again, um, I want this to be the player's place to address issues. Players, coaches in Chicago, all of them, you know, I'm going to get with all you know. I've been around you forever, and I know I'll get you over. It's just the second week, and this was like, today was on the run, but uh, we everybody involved figured this would be the best time to uh, plant it's the perfect. show. Yeah, uh, you know, we'll be here every week, 7 to 8, intellectualradio.com. And, we, and he giving Mark education. Mark on the mark. He educating y'all, man. He yeah, educating and, and I really want to involve a lot of a lot of the parents, too. So, listen, let's get with this. All right? Yeah. It's your boy, Appreciate Mark McGuire, you. your boy, Chicago Millionaire. We up out of chill. Appreciate you. All right, Big Mark. I don't know, but I can't believe Bobby. He it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. You know.